Welcome everyone to chapter 10, parametric equations and polar coordinates. 10.1 curves defined by parametric equations goes over the definitions of, hey, what is a parametric equation? And then we're going to actually sketch some curves that are defined by parametric equations. And then finally, we're going to learn how to transform between parametric equations and our well-known Cartesian equations. So let's get to it with a definition. Okay, so we're going to suppose that x and y are both given as functions of a third variable t. Usually I think of this as time, uh, but it's called a parameter. So and they're given by some equations. I don't know what they look like. These often change, but f of t and g of t, so some function of time. And let me draw a sketch, right? So parameterized curves uh, can look quite amazing, right? So they don't have to be uh, y as a function of x. They can be quite complicated. So here's one. Uh, and the main thing is for different times, or for different values of our parameter t, uh, our point travels along this curve. So t equals 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, and then maybe I'll make this final point t equals 4. So these are called parametric equations. This x equals f of t and y equals g of t. These are the parametric equations. And then, as you can see, each value of t determines a point, a place on this curve, x, y. And we can plot in the coordinate plane, which we just did here. As t varies, right, our point varies, and it traces out the curve. Altogether, we call this thing a parametric curve. Okay, so let's get some practice with uh, a little more specifics here. So I'm going to plot the parametric equations x equals 2t, and y equals 3 minus t. So now I have uh, particular equations. And then I'm going to find the corresponding Cartesian equation. So in order to plot this thing, uh, let me go ahead and make a table, right? Just like our good old days when we used to plot things in Cartesian uh, coordinates. So I'm going to choose some different values for t. And then I'm going to see what happens if I plug these values into my x equation and into my y equation. Now I'll also choose t equals negative 1 here for fun. So if I plug in 0, for x and for y, I should get 0 and 3. If I plug in 1, I'll get 2 and 2. If I plug in 2, I'll get x is 4, y is 1. And so I'm just, again, plugging these things into my equations and seeing what x and y will give me. So now this will give me a plot, right, on my x, y plane. The first point is 0, 3. The second point is 2, 2. The third point is 4, 1. After that comes 6, 0, and then back here I have negative 2, comma, 4. So we can see with these parametric equations, we seem to be graphing a straight line. So the question is, okay, can I get the corresponding Cartesian equation? And the way that we're going to do this, at least for this example, is by trying to solve for t. So for instance, for my x equation, I could divide by 2 and get t equals x over 2. For my y equation, I could add t on both sides and then subtract y on both sides to get t equals 3 minus y. So since these are both equal to t by the transitive property of equality, they must be equal to each other. And therefore, I can rearrange this to solve for y, right? y equals 3 minus x over 2. And we can see we have a y-intercept and we have a slope. Right? So y-intercept is 3, our slope is negative 1 half, and we can verify that on our graph. Right? Here's the y-intercept at 3, and we can see when we move 2 to the right, I go 1 down. So that's going to be a slope of negative 1 half. So this Cartesian equation makes sense. Now, sometimes we restrict t to lie in a certain finite interval, right? so we don't have it continue on forever. So in this case, we still have the parametric equations x equals some function of time, y equals some other function of time, but then we restrict t to be between a and b. In this case, we can talk about an initial point and a terminal point. So our initial point is when t is equal to a, and our terminal point is when t is equal to b. Now actually, if we go back up to my first example here, my little sketch, we can see at t equals 0, that was our initial point. So this is the x value at 0 and the y value at 0. Sometimes you also say f of 0 and g of 0. And then over here at 4, that was our terminal point. Right? This is the x value at 4, and then we have the y value at 4.
Okay. Let's go and do another example with some more initial and terminal points here. We have x is 2 sine t, y is 2 cosine t, and now t ranges between 0 and pi over 2. Find the corresponding uh, Cartesian equations. Oh, and plot. So again, I'm going to make a table, plug in some different t values. Now my t ranges between 0 and pi over 2. So I'm going to do 0, I'm going to do pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2. Again, I'm choosing kind of the well-known values for cosine and sine uh, on my unit circle to plot this. And now I'm going to start plugging these into x and into y. So when I plug in 0 for time, or t, into x, I get 0. When I plug pi over 6, small sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. When I plug in pi over 4, I get root 2 over 2, pi over 3, root 3 over 2, and finally pi over 2 gives me 1. All of these get multiplied by 2. And then for my y values, when I plug in 0 into cosine, I get 1, so 2 times 1. When I plug in pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2. So again, I'm just using the point plotting method here, plugging in different values for my parameter t. Now let's go ahead and plot these on my Cartesian coordinate axes. So it looks like the biggest x value I get is 2, the biggest y value I get is 2. So here's a good plot. So my first point is 0, 2. My second point is 1 square root of 2. So remember, square root of 2 is right around 1.4-ish. Oops, sorry, this is square root of 3. I'm looking at the next one. 1.7-ish is the square root of 3. So 1, oops, there we go, zoom in. 1.7, it's got to be somewhere around in there. Now square root of 2 is around 1.4. So this is 1.4, 1.4 is that point. And then this is around 1.7 for my x value and 1 for my y value. So 1.7-ish and 1. And then finally, 2, 0. So looking at this, it looks like maybe part of a circle or something, right? It's not a straight line for sure. Um, so I think it's part of a circle. So in order to find the Cartesian equation in this case, I want to remember an equation that relates sine and cosine to a constant. Okay. Um, you know, we could try solving for t in this case, uh, but it'd be very messy and you'd have to worry about where is arc sine and arc cosine uh, defined, right? We'd have to worry about the domains for these things. So uh, I think it's better to go remember an equation that relates sine and cosine to a uh, constant. And the equation I was thinking of is, of course, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And now if I multiply through by 4 on both sides, we can see that really this is just 2 sine of t quantity squared plus 2 cosine of t quantity squared equals 4. Now 2 sine t is the same thing as x. So I go ahead and substitute an x, and 2 cosine t is the same thing as y. So we can see that this is part of the Cartesian equation, x squared plus y squared equals 4. So it's actually part of the circle, radius 2 centered at the origin, but just a piece, right? Because t only goes from 0 to pi over 2. All right, and that just about does it here in our first video for 10.1. Go ahead and take a quick break, and when you come back, i got a few more examples for you. I'll see you shortly.